All right guys, so basically I'm gonna try my best to make this video as organized as I possibly can. It's like a segue into um, the pink elephant in the room is what I'll call it, and that is why I stopped competing. And I think that this is a much, a well needed video to be made because my channel name is Derek Deadlifts. A lot of you guys know the reason why I started creating my YouTube channel was because uh, the first video was my first powerlifting competition. Um, just a simple video clip and of my 500 pound deadlift, which is what I had set out to achieve at my first competition, and that's what I was able to get. And I was I quickly fell um, in love with the aspect of doing the competitions. Um, I enjoyed every pretty much every moment of even the training aspect of things. You definitely powerlifting definitely has to be a thing that you enjoy to do. You can't just um, <clears throat> you can't just fake it and just try to do a competition because you're not going to perform well and you're going to fizzle out and realize that maybe I should check, try to do something else. But regardless, I kind of fell into that same aspect of things and I really wanted to. Let me clean off my glasses real quick, guys. Make sure I can see everything good or you guys can not troll me for having like dirty glasses. Anyways, <laughs> side note guys, so a quote that um, rest in peace to Boston Lloyd and his family that he made on Facebook several years ago um, when I started get really getting heavily into competing in powerlifting. I originally did want to go down the bodybuilding or physique aspect of things, but I realized that I didn't really like the aspect that you had to get so lean for the shows and the fact that you had to eat uh, basically, I just didn't like the dieting aspect of bodybuilding, to keep it plain, short, and simple. Respect to everyone that I know who does that sort of thing, it just wasn't something that I wanted to make the sacrifices to do, to be completely honest with you guys. Um, so, you can take this towards comparing it to power, powerlifting as well, though. Um, bodybuilding is temporary. We Walking around at 270 pounds with low body fat is impossible to maintain as we age. Bodybuilding is only a sport for the top 5 to 10 in the world who can actually make a living competing for the rest of us it's just a lifestyle or hobby but if you want to be the best you have to act as if it's a full-time job many of us get wrapped up and shut out personal relationships just because it's not optimal for being the best you can be in the bodybuilding world but what most real most people don't realize is whether you're a fat slob or a 300 pound monster it's all temporary when you grow old, you're going to wish you weren't a hermit and shut people out because you're potentially missing out on having a family, loving someone unconditionally, which is everlasting. So if you think about it, is it worth it putting something that's temporary, which you can't keep forever, over, ha over having something that you can always cherish and have? And um, you can still be a great bodybuilder and put everything into it. And there's a lot more that he mentioned in that Facebook status, but that was the very beginning and that's what stuck out to the most to myself and i'm sure to many others who um followed him um he did create a mass following through just basically being probably the first um open bodybuilder he wasn't even a professional he wasn't not even a pro not to downplay everything he achieved as far as business aspects where it comes to um personal training and being a diet coach to many who um, we're in the fitness industry and even, even including even some local people that I've known through, uh, throughout the years and, uh, working out in the gym and being heavily involved into the fitness industry. Um, I came across a few people that said, Hey, he's my coach. He's a great guy. Even though he does like, he did used to like to like have some fun and troll people online. Um, which is good because I think I, now a lot of people are going to say like, why do you think that's good? Well, I think a lot of like what bodybuilding and powerlifting and fitness is missing is a lot of like trash talking, whereas a lot of sports you really have that. Um, not to say that I I really don't think they'll ever get as big as we'll say baseball, football, basketball, hockey, a lot of the major sports in America. Um, just simply because of the unhealthy part aspect of um, what it takes to be very very successful. Um, at the highest level of that. So, um, basically I want to transition into 
my next reason of why I stopped competing and the title of this video. I'm actually going to make you guys hang around towards the end to find out that out. But I'm also going to compare him to a uh, powerlifter who I um, heavily followed online and even still follow to this day. His name is Pete Rubish. Um, you guys can check his channel out. He went through a similar uh, situation as far as um, being probably the first um, powerlifter to be open about, or as open as he was about his drug use in his time competing at a very high level in powerlifting and his um, experiences and how it affected, him, affected his lifestyle, his life in general, in a negative way. And now he kind of has a channel where he's been completely off drugs for several years and is going um, the natural route of, I'm not sure if he's going to be competing again or not, but apparently um, that's something I think he would like to do. Just, uh, he definitely has a lot of good videos out there. You guys should definitely check his YouTube channel out if you're interested in powerlifting because a lot of um, things that I learned were from him and definitely could apply it to your own training, guys. And I've always been I've always been a good deadlifter, so that's another reason why I feel like I've always um, followed someone who I had similar type of proportions are as far as height goes. Maybe not necessarily never got up to being as heavy as he did, but I mean, you can compare it apples to oranges, you know, uh, being natural, which is where I always competed in the drug tested competitions, always have been a natural competitor and never really wanted to go the enhanced route because I knew of the health effects that um, would come with going that route. And, um, yeah, so basically, I'd say the uh, the reason why I stopped competing is partially because of health and partially because of just refocusing my life towards trying to better myself in other aspects other than just being uh, basically one-sided. Um, if you want to be at the very, very best of powerlifting, you're going to have to put in five days a week as far as the workouts go. You're going to have to put in that one to two hours of training in the gym. You're going to have to put in the hours of meal prep and um, eating your meals throughout the day. And it, uh, As a lot of you guys may see, think like, well, it can't be that hard, can it? Well, I will say that at the top, at my peak, when I was up to 230 pounds, I was probably eating around 4,000 calories a day. Basically eating around the clock, uh, 4,500, probably even some 5,000 calories days. I really have no idea the exact amount of food I was eating. I just remember the fact that when I was 230, I was consistently consuming 3,500 calories or more a day, um, along with training five days a week. Um, so I could only imagine what it takes to be some of these guys who are walking around at 250, 260, 275, 300 pounds, um, and the effects that it's having on their internal organs is definitely not something that you can maintain as you age as basically what was discussed in that video, in that, in that video, excuse me, in that Facebook status that he was, that he had posted several years ago. <clears throat> and, um, basically I can segue this into the reason why I stopped competing. I'm going to try not to make this too long of a vid video, but I also want to get my point across so that way, um, you guys can hear my situation and maybe it's something that you can relate to. Um, so basically I started lifting when I was 15 years old, give or take guys, probably right before I turned 15. Um, I have was going through a transition period where I played baseball, um, throughout elementary school and into middle school and ninth grade. I did was doing cross country running as well as doing baseball throughout middle school. And I kind of came to a, a transition period where I knew I I knew that I knew that I wasn't good enough to go forward with baseball, but 
I also was losing interest in playing baseball. So that's probably the better, the more important reason why I guess I segued away from playing baseball. And throughout that uh, year of doing cross-country running, I had taken a weightlifting class in high school and I realized that, wow, this is really fun. Like, I went from benching 95 pounds to probably being the second strongest person in the class um, after just a few short months of lifting. And it soon became a big passion of mine. I remember that whole summer, we I never went to, I never had started going to a gym, but my dad had a weightlifting set at home. And now you guys know I've basically segued back into doing the home gym workouts, and it's been pretty fun to do, I'm not going to lie. It's definitely been something I've missed, and I've realized that um, externally, like, people think that they need external motivations to work out. Um, which can be helpful. I'm not going to um, discount, we'll say. I'll use that word, discount, right? Discount the effects, the positive effects that you can have from external motivations of people doing um, something in the gym where, where you're motivated. Like you're seeing the person next to you doing 225 on the bench and you're, you're like, I just want to do as much as them. So you're trying to like push yourself and it's almost like you're as a group you're being positive and trying to build yourself up with everyone around you um so there's that's whether to debate or not whether you kind of need to uh, work out in a gym or at home it's really kind of personal choice um the reason why i chose to return back to the home gym workouts was because of the thing that happened in 2020 which i will not be named because youtube does not like when we t mention this word so but you guys can infer what that is basically <laughs> uh, yeah so basically the reason why i stopped competing is well my body was breaking down guys to be honest with you um i was only i'll say from 15 to age 23 I was heavily into lifting um, hundreds of pounds throughout the week, four to five days a week consecutively, consistently, guys. So, I mean, you guys don't think that when you're 15, 16, 17, 18, um, that the effects of your training is you're not going to feel it to your 50s, 60s, 70s, right? But I'm going to tell you, I'm, I have definitely haven't been as extreme as some people that I've known who... Um, took their powerlifting and to a uh, higher degree of extremeness than I did, but that doesn't um, discount the reason that my body is definitely not feeling as uh, as healthy as it was a couple years ago. Um, now whether it's through genetics, whether it's through Sorry, I just, just got distracted because I kind of flicked a little bit of water on my chips and I'm kind of sad now. But, or actually not water, this is a seltzer from Stop and Shop. Very, very nice and zero calories, guys. Anyways. Anyways. Um, so I kind of like knew after my last competition um, in three years ago now, so in 2019, back when I was just turned 24 years old, I believe, because it was in June and my birthday is in May, which guys, happy birthday to your boy Derek Deadlifts, he had just turned 26 when this video can, um, will come out. So, now I never went to something to the extreme where I needed to get um, any sort of like disc replacement or something like that or tearing my ACL or um, whether it's a torn bicep or something like that um, but I did pull a disc in my lower back back after my last competition when I pulled the 540 pounds um, and I actually didn't even realize it to be honest with you guys I knew that I was in pain like I knew that I didn't feel right that night after I competed, um, me and the family went out to a restaurant, we went out to Cello's to get some food, um, which we typically would do after a full day of basically, like, lifting, right guys? <laughs> 
So after a full day of the competition, usually I'd go out with fam and we'd get some food, which would always be like, I don't know, kind of like the reward, right guys? From the 12 to 16 weeks that I put into getting ready for the competition. And uh, yeah, so I really, really knew that something like didn't feel right. And my dumb ass basically just like put it off and was like, all right, I'll just like take a couple days off, won't lift. And I remember like hanging out with a friend of mine, Matt Bergeron. Shout out to you, my longtime training partner. And it was actually before a class I was going to uh, CCRI, and he knew that like he's like, dude, are you sure you're right? I'm like, what do you mean? I'm like, I'm like trying to play it off like I'm not, I don't feel bad. He's like, no, 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 you you don't like look like you're standing up straight. He was like, are you sure your back's like fine? I'm like, I mean, I feel like a little, like it's a little off. And like, I knew there was like a pain while I was, only when I was like sitting down for, standing up for a long period of time. When I was sitting down, it wasn't bothering me. So I figured it couldn't be a pulled muscle or anything. Um, so fast forward from that, um, I went to go see a massage therapist. And I had off and on seen a massage therapist throughout my years of competing just to help with the recovery process and to basically stay as injury free as I possibly could and she had mentioned that um that she thinks that it could have been a possible pulled disc in my lower back and I was like okay well I definitely believe it because I was definitely in pain for the next several days um and leading on to the next week uh the next few days following after my massage therapist um, appointment I had felt a lot better and the pain has decided and I thought that okay let me try to take another uh, t uh, take a comeback right because I, I had set out to achieve this goal of hitting the 500 pound deadlift in my first meet and every competition I wanted to get a little bit better and achieve a certain goal whether it was to hit my 275 pound bench press which I was able to achieve which Took me several meets to finally get to, but I did get there. And um, following after that, I hit my 405 pound squat in the same meet, actually, at that I hit the 275 pound bench press. And those were the two, I remember in particular, like writing those two lifts down. Those were like the two lifts that I wanted to hit. Actually, wanted, I thought I was gonna hit the 275 pound bench. My na young naive self thought I was gonna hit it in my first competition but it took me four more to finally hit that. And about two more years to finally hit that one. But the important thing is that I achieved 90% of the goals or 95% of the goals that I had originally. Um, I guess the, my main goal was, my main three goals were towards to retire on a career with a 500 plus pound deadlift, a 400 plus pound squat, and a 300 plus pound bench press. Just because I thought like five, four, three, that'd be kind of like a cool, like five plates, four plates, three plates, as far as deadlift squat bench goes. And that's like, basically puts me in a elite category where um, only like 95 or whatever the percentage is um, <clears throat> of people that will ever achieve that in their life will hit which is put would put me in a category of that I thought would be kind of cool. But you guys know that when competing goes for those of y'all, those of you guys who have competed in powerlifting that you might set a goal of it being we'll say 200 pound bench versus meet and then you're trying to hit 245, 265, 275. But basically a lot of you guys are were in the same boat as me. You you hit your 225, you just want to the next goal isn't even 245. You just want to hit 275 already. And then it's like 275 comes and you're just like, I want to hit three plates. And then three plates, hit three plates and you're just like, I want to hit 405 now, right? And basically the numbers, the bar that you set for yourself keeps climbing higher and higher and higher and higher and higher. And as the weights climb higher, the, your risk of getting injured well, guess what, guys? It also climbs higher. And <clears throat> whether you guys receive your first injury in your first competition, second competition, third, fourth, 
fifth, twenty fifth competition, whatever it is, you, everyone needs to have an exit strategy to to what do you do when you're done competing? Because I'd say the hardest part about letting go of the whole like competing and powerlifting thing is like the mental aspect of things because you kind of like set um, a large portion of your life whether it was for five years whether it was for 10 years whether it was for 20 years 25 30 however long you decide to compete you set a large amount of your time basically focused around the same people who you're gonna see guess what either in the gym or you're gonna see them to do things activities outside the gym i was lucky enough to have friends that were um in and outside of the powerlifting world hey, my fellow youtube friends and family members hope you guys enjoyed this uh conclusion i wasn't really sure if i was going to post that to be honest um it's been something that's been on my computer for a bit but i haven't posted anything in a few months so had to give you guys a new video and keep the content fresh you know return to my old dairy deadlifts roots make sure you check out the links in the description box below subscribe to the channel and you guys know where to catch me in another one